Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back once again to the Assassin's Creed Origins Discovery Tour DLC walkthrough. Uh, time now to do the next tour that we're going to do right now, which is all about uh, Jean-Francois Champollion. As we need to learn, the, uh, we need to learn how hieroglyphs were identified and deciphered by Jean-Francois Champollion. Uh, estimate time will be five minutes with eight stations to explore here. History experts will take over from here, so until then, enjoy the tour. Welcome to Jean-Francois Champollion. Between the 5th century CE and the Renaissance, knowledge of hieroglyphs was entirely lost. Many enthusiasts tackled the challenge of deciphering the language with little success. Some groundwork was made with various researchers identifying names and some grammatical structure, and confirming that cartouches were markers for royal names. They were still missing a critical piece of information that would eventually be revealed thanks to the discovery of the Rosetta Stone. The Rosetta Stone was found in 1799 by Bouchard, a soldier in Napoleon's army. The stele dates from 196 BCE, written in ancient Egyptian and Greek with three scripts, hieroglyphics, demotic, and Greek alphabet. Following the defeat of Napoleon Bonaparte in 1801, the English took possession of the stone. It has been at the British Museum since 1802 and remains the most visited object of the museum to date. The first translation was of the Greek section only in 1803. It detailed a decree of Pharaoh Ptolemy V reminding the citizens that their pharaoh had led Egypt to prosperity. It was fully translated 20 years after by Jean-Francois Champollion, who was working with a facsimile. Through his studies of the stone, Champollion was able to make a critical observation that would unlock the whole mystery, that hieroglyphics were not only ideograms, but also phonograms. Hieroglyphs consist of phonetic glyphs, single characters, and logograms. Essentially, they are a combination of phonetics, alphabet, and full words, which in total form a language. While studying the stone, Champollion realized that there was a difference in the number of hieroglyphic characters in relation to the number of Greek characters for the same word. This led him to believe that hieroglyphs must have phonetic characteristics. This was the first step to unlocking the Rosetta Stone's secrets. To prove this theory, Champollion began identifying Egyptian rulers' names and then compared their phonetic pronunciation to the Greek version. For example, Cheops had been the Greek name given by ancient chroniclers to the owner of the Great Pyramid, Khufu. The next step for Champollion was to confirm that his approach was verifiable by using the Philae obelisk as an additional reference. 
Engraved in the obelisk are two inscriptions in Egyptian hieroglyphs and Greek. Once he confirmed the names of Ptolemy and Cleopatra within these texts and confirmed the same phonetic patterns as on the Rosetta Stone, Champollion knew he was on the right track. Champollion had already mastered several ancient languages when he took on deciphering the Rosetta Stone. He used his knowledge of Coptic to identify the solar disk hieroglyph on the obelisk as the phonetic translation of Ra. Further translation only strengthened his conclusion. Egyptian hieroglyphs encompass the alphabet in both phonetics and determinative ways, which means that the symbol represents the word itself. All right, there we have it. So that completes the tour of uh, Jean-Francois Champollion. Uh, that is done, and we have uh, two more tours to go for the Egypt category until that is completed. So on that note, that is going to wrap it up right here. Uh, we still got a uh, little bit more to go until the Discovery Tour DLC walkthrough for AC Origins is done. I hope they do this again in, in future Assassin's Creed games, because this is looking fantastic. So that is it. Thank you again for watching. We will see you guys next time on the next tour. Until then, take care.